What's going on everybody? Got another video here for you in a little bit of a different setup um, as this knife was actually too big to fit in my normal uh, video recording spot. So uh, here we are in the kitchen on the dining room table. And so I have for you the Cold Steel Espada XL, the uh, monster knife. Uh, I'm wearing gloves today. You know, I usually do that with some anodized knives and stuff not to get fingerprints on during the video. But today, because this actually isn't uh, a knife for me, I bought this as a gift for uh, someone that is just getting into the knife collecting or just, you know, has bought a few fixed blades and was looking for their first folder. But I know they like big knives. So I figured I'd start them off with the biggest folding knife I know out there, the uh, Cold Steel Espada. And of course, I have to go with the dress edition. I couldn't go with just the, uh, the regular textured G10 one. I had to go all out with this one. So. But really, I want to make a video of it first, and I'm going to try and not do too much with it, obviously, as it's a gift, and this is brand new, just got it in a day or two ago. Um, it's for their birthday, which is in a week or so. So I'll make this video, and I won't upload it till after I've given it to them, obviously, just in case, for whatever reason, they watch my YouTube channel and they see it on there. But let's get into this thing. I'm not going to do too much about the specs or anything, because you guys have seen lots of videos about that. I kind of want to just show it as a comparison to some of my other bigger knives and talk about just my thoughts about it as far as first impressions. Um, obviously I'm not going to do any hardware or, or uh, use with this because it's going to someone else so I can't talk about the durability but you can watch all the cold steel videos that they do on their tests which are just fun to watch either way. Uh, but this thing really is gorgeous looking. Um, I've seen some things as far as maybe uh, after a while of use and wear, maybe the polishes go off or something, but as far as out of the box, you can see they really did a nice polish on the aluminum. That's the uh, Aero Grade Aluminum 7075, I think. This G10 is really just a nice polish. I left the uh, clear plastic covers on here too. I didn't want to risk any scratches on here doing the video, but on the, uh, the aluminum bolsters there. And then the blade just really looked very well done as far as the nice high satin finish on there with the flats. I'm also standing during this video because I couldn't sit and have the camera high enough to fit everything. So it's actually getting a little tiring already holding this and keeping my head close to the camera. You can see the pocket clip, uh, the multi hand holds here. You can actually, you know, two hand hold it. Uh, you can have the up high grip with a lot of control with your finger on that. Uh, uh, finger, it's not a disc, but I guess finger plate, uh, thumb plate, you could call it. Um, then you have, you know, the low grip here with the with the most amount of reach, which is a huge reach with this knife. And then really kind of the uh, hybrid grip, having that knuckle in between, giving you that mid grip, either thumb on or thumb around control. And I guess you could go reverse grip on this. I have to take the thing off camera just to wield it around. But you know, there's your up high reverse grip, mid reverse grip. And then super long, I guess, throat slash from two and a half feet away grip. Uh, but just to give you an idea, I think it's always good for size comparison. So I brought my other biggest knives that I have out just to show you size comparisons. Um, and you know, let me take this off screen for a second. And we'll go biggest to, or I guess smallest to biggest of the biggest knives. So here's my uh, Browse Blades Division. It's a little over four inch blade, 4.37 inches. Uh, I'm not sure which one's next. Uh, let's just go this one. Uh, here is my Medford Viper and S35 VN. This is a four inch blade. I believe the handle is a little bit longer. No, actually, huh, Division has, well maybe just because that's one's above and one's below. Uh, pretty comparable as far as length. This one's a little bit girthier, I think, uh, especially at the, the top end there. So we'll put that that way. All right. And I'm not sure if this one's going to be bigger than the other one, but I know the blade isn't longer. This is my Extrema Ratio RAO. Really love this knife. Not the most practical knife, but definitely if you want to go camping or you're going out in the wilderness, this knife is pretty cool. has the little part to make it kind of a fixed blade to screw in there um, and they put a really nice edge on this knife too and then oh, there goes the case quartermaster Hannibal 
that's a five inch blade and you can see once you put it butt to butt it actually is the longest out of all of them so let's scoot these down I'm not sure if we'll get them all on camera um, but we'll put the Espada here and you'll really see the big jump I'll whip this thing open you'll probably hear the click in the background <laughs> things crazy dun 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 I mean, look at that. That's insane. Here, I'll try to pull it down a little bit for you guys. We might lose the Viper and the Division and the screenshot, but I mean, this is a big knife and this is a big knife, and then you see this beast coming here. That's insane. I don't know. That's a, that's a crazy looking thing. I mean, it's a seven and a half inch blade, um, but the handle adds so much length to it as well. Um, it's just a, a whale. Huh. Let me get the, uh, these out of here. I do like to close this one a little bit lightly because with um, this locking system, it does suck it in pretty hard, and I like it to you know not slam shut. Same thing you should probably do with this one too with the triad lock system. I don't really like slamming the lock shut on those. All right, so getting back to the Espada, um, right out of the box, it is a little stiff. Maybe not a little, so pretty stiff, um, especially with the unlocking part. You know, you got to really put your thumb in deep. And it pretty much is a two handed knife, I would say. You can open it this way. You can see I can break it with a thumb and then give it a little wrist flick to open. So it's not hard to open one handed, but closing is pretty difficult because you have to have, at least from the beginning, a lot of pressure on this triad lock to break it. And then you do have to give it a little push to get going. Maybe once um, the guy I give it to has used it for a while, it might just drop a little bit easier. But for right now, you definitely have to give it that little push close. But this is something I don't think that you're just going to be playing with all the time, just flipping open and close. I think you're going to flip it open, admire it. If you have to use it, use it for whatever it is. And then, you know, go back to you're going to have time to do this and put it back in the closed position give you a little view on this side with it closed. Sorry about the glare too, it's not the best lighting in here. Um, but it does kind of, you can really see the nice reflection on there though. Really like how this backspacer is done with the lock integrated into it. Very seamless. Um, obviously the high polish there. Just a really gorgeous piece. I think, I hope he really likes this. Um, it, it, I'm, I'm kind of tempted just to keep it for myself even though I know I would never use this for anything but it just, um, a conversation piece really. I mean look at that even closed. How much blade is right there. And I know there's some debate as far as Cold Steel as a company, some of their marketing tactics and um, uh, as far as the, the price range and everything. But not using this knife obviously but just seeing it as far as how it opens and closes, um, the fit and finish. It really is very well done and looks pretty fantastic. Um, it would be kind of neat to see this with a titanium high polish bolster and maybe instead of uh, G10, maybe like carbon fiber or something like that. But obviously that would skyrocket the price on it too. And then talking about price, MSRP on these, pretty high from Cold Steel. Dealer prices, wide range. I believe I got a really good deal on this. Um, I got this through Knife Hog. Um, they give you a discount as a first time buyer too. And you can also usually find some coupon cold uh, coupon codes on Google for them too which were pretty good so I get this for a significant lower price than the MSRP and probably what I would feel comfortable paying on this knife I think MSRP when these first came out was uh, four hundred and thirty dollars or something around that range which for these materials yeah it's an awesome knife it's a ton of material and everything um, but they are manufactured a production knife probably definitely outside the realm of what I would have paid for this Dealers, when they first came out, I think were in the 350s to 300 range. Um, and then what I got this for was significantly less than that. So that's just, just a nice, really good deal I got from Knife Hog. Definitely recommend you guys checking them out. Um, as well as anytime I get knives from any other dealers, I like to say how it worked and the experience. And those guys were great. So good stuff with them. Uh, let's see here. Lastly, we'll just do a quick cut test. And I think that's it. Just wanted to do a nice quick 10 minute or so video for you. 
So just some nice copy paper. Obviously, I don't want to mess up this blade or anything before I give it to the guy, but I think cutting a piece of copy paper isn't going too far out. So pop it, swing it, nice, solid sound. And we'll see if we can get this on camera. Wow. For such a big knife, I mean, that was actually very smooth. I was surprised. I thought I was going to give a little bit of resistance there, but... Yeah, and then puncture power. Very nice. You know, really nice, smooth feeling. No, uh, at least from the parts that we cut on that huge uh, seven and a half inch blade, no catches or snags or anything. That's that's pretty nice. All right, and the last thing I did want to show you guys, which I've been meaning to do in my other videos, and I always forget. I kind of want to show how it looks in the pocket, especially with this thing, and I'm not video coordinated enough to do cut scenes and switch the camera around without it looking funky so I saw I think it was Jeff Cutlery Lover, uh, Cutlery Lover did this where he takes a t-shirt and just puts it on so you can see how much is sticking out and how deep it is and I really like that concept so I brought a t-shirt out here and we'll see if we can do this with the gloves but just to see how it would drop down into a pocket and how much will be sticking out based on the t-shirt so there's the pocket clip and we'll see if i can get this under here uh, here's the clunky part of the video there we go there we go okay so let's say it was in your pocket this is kind of how it would look sitting out. I would assume. I mean, hopefully that's the best uh, demonstration I can do with that. We'll try to bring it up closer here for you. Um, I mean, it should be hanging down a little bit, so probably like this. So you have a decent amount sticking out to grab onto. Obviously, the pocket clip is set kind of down because they didn't want to drill into the bolster. Um, and then to kind of give me an idea as far as how deep in the pocket it would be, these were your jeans right about there. So, yeah, you definitely have to have some type of a deep pocket to fit it in. <clears throat> and you kind of have almost looks like a old style gun, <laughs> a little pistol sticking out. But, you know, comes out like that. Get that out of here. And then lastly, because of this thumb uh, plate on here, when you do, when it is in your pocket and you pull it out, this is going to catch on, if you pull it down, like out like this, so it's coming out instead of just up, it will catch and open out of the pocket pretty neat so that's my quick video on it. I just want to show it to you guys as far as first impressions go I think it is a pretty neat piece um, not for everybody obviously for me more of a collector's piece but once again I'm not even this isn't even for my collection this is for my guy I'm getting it for um, uh, for his birthday and hopefully he likes it a lot and hopefully he gets into the knife collecting as the rest of us and then uh, that would be pretty cool so cold steel the Spada XL, <clears throat> first impressions, feels good, looks good. Performance-wise, uh, I'll have him report back to me on that and see what he thinks of it. So, all right, catch you later.